Good evening, viewers, and you're very, very welcome to our latest Live and Leash programme. And I'm delighted to say I'm joined by local singer-songwriter James O'Connor. James, thanks for taking the time out to speak to us this evening. How are you? I'm very well, John. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for having me on your show and having me on this platform. I was just saying to you before the show, it's a, it's amazing to have this kind of platform to be able to come on and, I suppose, promote yourself and talk about things. We like to talk about music and all that sort of thing. So it's a perfect time for me to come on here and talk about my new album. <laughs> so I thank you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And You're as you welcome. say, perfect timing because the new album is coming out, A Cluster of Narratives. And it was, it, it's coming out six years after this album, okay, yeah. behind the scenes. And the leap, artistically, the leap between this one and your latest mm. album, which is coming out in about 10 days' time, is a huge yeah. difference. I'm, Massive difference, yeah. So, like, when like the people say, okay, there's such a gap between albums, and they, they seem to think, oh, you should be churning out an album, one, one a year. Well, what are your thoughts yeah. on that? Well, ideally, I would like to be churning out an album once a year. I mean, that would be a perfect... I mean, people have done that. Of course, Bob Dylan, those kind of people can... can start one for one, they can afford to do it. <laughs> like, it does. It costs me a couple of thousand. I'm not going to say exactly how much, but there's a few thousand involved in making an album. That's probably one of the, the first things that would put you back. You know, to get, get an album right... To have it sounding the way you want to sound, you're going to have to spend a lot of money, you know, between starting off, paying musicians, the studio, the engineers, everything. There's so many costs. And then I don't think I'd be able to do that every year. I, I'd probably force myself to write an album every year, but I don't know how good the quality of the album would be. Do you know what I mean? So apart from the songwriting, you'd be rushing it. I, I don't think there's enough time in the year for me personally to, to make a brand new album every year, but... And never say never. And maybe maybe down the line, if I'm, um, I suppose if I'm not teaching guitar, I'm not doing other things, then I probably could have my own studio if that was the case. You could spend 24 hours a day in there. So <laughs> at the moment, that's not possible. But yeah, you were saying like the, the gap, I, I don't, it's not deliberate. Like I did, I was, there's other stuff going on. There was, I suppose there was gigs happening. There was all sorts of different jobs here and there. So you know life life happens as well in between things so you don't always like i said you can't just give yourself 24 hours a day in the studio to get this done so i mean you have to have a life outside of that as well um that's i suppose that, like and artistically listening to the new album it's you'll hear it it's a lot there's a lot of synths a lot of synths going on i i i personally like to try and make every single album different you know so that there's a different sound from the one before and I know that the first one behind the scenes, I'm looking at here in my hand, and I actually got a few copies reissued in a gloss finish. So if anybody's looking for them, they can have one as well. Um, but the, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. actually be putting up one as a, a viewer's prize. Oh, tomorrow. lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh. And we'll actually, with your permission, because I know it's ahead know. of the game, and I know it's only coming out the 3rd of July. If, yeah. with your kind of permission, I know I'm, I'm, uh, I'm blindsiding you here. With your oh, kind permission, well. if we could put that up as a prize next week, so it's closer to the launch date for Absolutely. one of our viewers as well, we'd really yeah, appreciate sir. that. Oh yeah, look, there's more there. I mean, I was just thinking it's hard to kind of it's hard to get rid of these units. Most most bands are probably not even doing physical CDs nowadays, but I I I have to have the product in my hand, so that's why I I've I've kind of grown up with CDs. You know, it was my kind of era to have CDs. I had hundreds of CDs, so I always wanted to have the physical product in my hand and, and to just pick up the piece of art, I think, and look at it, you know, and read the back of it. There's so much more to it than just putting it up online and hope for the best, you know? So, Correct. Correct. So um, um, I, I'm the, I'm, in, in other words, I'm the vinyl generation and you're the CD generation. Yeah. Well, funny enough, um, when you say that, I was thinking of getting vinyl because vinyls are, are really coming back, you know? But again, the cost, the cost of making vinyls, I think it was the cheapest I was looking at was something like a thousand euros to make 150 vinyls at the lowest grade, you know, so you're not get, you're getting quality at all. You're just getting, you're churning out vinyls at the lowest co possible cost. So, and as well as that, then you're kind of, 
you're stuck to store the vinyls you know you have 150 vinyls and you're trying to get rid of them so <laughs> you know not many people have turntables i don't actually have a turntable myself so that's another point <laughs> you'd yeah. be kind of yeah. um cds are one thing they're small i mean the, the vinyls you're, you're you're kind of stuck with them and you have to store them standing upright i believe i'm not really a vinyl collector but it would be nice maybe sometime down the line if they're still going around to to pit to make a few you know yeah, so yeah. it'd be great to see this on vinyl at some stage i think it yeah, deserves, yeah. I, I think it deserves vinyl yeah maybe you're right yeah i suppose i might look into it again and see if i can come up with another idea if they'll do a cut me a deal to make a less amount you know you kind of have to get i think the lowest quantity would be maybe 150 or something like that you know but i'd imagine maybe you could probably get is there somebody there, i'm not even sure if there's people doing them in low low runs of them but maybe they are never there are but i'll check into it you know so and see. James, so, so when, when did you start the process of writing these songs? Well, writing this um well i'm always like I'm, uh, songwriting is ongoing you know the songs are always i i could write a song maybe every couple of weeks i might not keep that song i might start a new song there could be a few songs going at the same time so eventually I'd say over the last six years, I probably wrote 40, 50 songs, you know, some of them are, obviously there's only 11 songs in this album, so they're the ones that made it to the album. Some songs that were kind of a struggle to maybe, should I put them on it, should I keep them on it, or so, but this is what I ended up with. Um, so the songwriting is a process that's kind of ongoing, and, you know, it's if you don't do it, you lose it, I think. You, you need to practice it as well, same as playing an instrument, I think, to keep practicing the lyric writing and then as the ideas come just write them down so they'll always come in handy and you can store the the lyrics somewhere and i have a lot of books and all kind of folders of just bits and pieces of lyrics i always like to write as well i, I don't like to to type lyrics into my phone or anything like that i like to write them down on paper it's the actual feeling of writing as well it's very it's very mindful you know you get a great kind of uh, you know, it just kind of sucks you in, you know, and you're 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 present in the present moment. You're actually writing something on a piece of paper. So, I forgot your question now, John. I'm <laughs> rambling on so much. No, no, no. Per no, no, no. Perfect answer. Perfect. Perfect answer. Like, how long? I mean, how long did the process take to come up to 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 come up, obviously, with the forty the forty original songs, and then to winnow it down to the final eleven? Yeah. Well, since the last album, like. As I said, there would have been 40 or 50 songs written in that, that period of time. And it doesn't seem like a lot, you know. It's a long period of time to just write that amount of songs. But some of them just don't seem... But this one, I wanted... What happened was the, the first song on the album is kind of the the lead. The, you know, the title track is the second one. But the idea for the, all of the album was that we are the stories we leave behind. And that was very recent, that song. So that kind of made me think then, well, what are what other songs have I that will fit that kind of theme for an album, you know? So they're all basically around stories, um, old stories are, so if we, are, we are the stories, we are the people who write our own stories and we live them and then we pass them on to next generations and they have their own stories. So to me, life is like, it might be sound cliche, but it's like one big story that we're, we're all kind of going through, you know, or a journey, even if you want to say. So the concept, I suppose, behind all of this is that, as you can see there but the lyrics are all kind of intertwined into the books some of the books that i've been reading to kind of inspire the songs as well so it's all mashed in it's like an idea of that if we we are the stories we leave behind um and there's a little story in each song uh say for example uh why did she stay is kind of a lead on from the song on the previous album falling up so that's I took part of the song Fallen Up and went with the girl's point of view that was in that song and wrote her kind of point of view on what was happening. Um, as you can see then in the inside of the album, there's uh, pictures. This was the video. I took the pictures from the video of We Are The Stories. There's like my grandfather there, an uncle, my own father's there. So these are all people who are living and some have passed away, of course, but there's, their stories are kind of intertwined within the songs, you know, and within me. So yeah. my inspiration are those people and their stories. And that's what drives me on to write well, albums like this, I suppose. Yeah. 
So to, to, to make a long story short, they wanted to make a concept kind of album, not not a full on uh, dark side of the moon or anything, but just a, my kind of version of what do stories mean to people and how how are people's lives made into songs? If that makes sense that way, it does. I hope it, it makes sense. It does, James, <laughs> it, does. it does. And tell me, do you have a favorite track? Um, a favorite track I, 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 I definitely do. <laughs> yeah, I, do. Well, I don't. I don't particularly. I like um, average city streets, but I like it for uh, for the music side of it. Average city street was actually a song that was. Let me see. It's probably written one of the earlier songs. I lived in Limerick for a time, um, and then I also lived in Budapest. But looking at people, people's lives, day to day lives on the street, just observing them. I used to go down to along the Danube when I lived in Budapest, and I'd sit there just looking at the river and people passing by and. Sometimes there was people holding hands in love, and sometimes there was people drunk out of minds or whatever, and there was people arguing. And then the same thing in different cities, like in Limerick City and Dublin City, and it's kind of a universal thing. Like people are, most people are trying their best to live their lives, but there's all sorts of different things that come up against them. So that was the idea for Average City Streets, and I think I achieved it, especially with the Limerick side of it. I got kind of a, I think. Because I live beside the People's Park, so you'll hear that mentioned in the lyrics as well. And such a lovely park there on the top of Mallow Street, I think it was. And it was, um, you know, it was such a lovely place to go during the day. It was really bright, especially a summer's day. You could just sit there. And then about that night, it just felt a bit, you, were, you weren't really supposed to be there at night time. You know, that sort of feeling. And so yeah. I tried to get that feeling across in the song. Um, that, that's probably one of my favorites. There's, a harder, there's, there's a, harder a harder edge to it. Yeah. Actually, you know what? It's the song is the the songs in the album kind of build up. There's sort of a a happy feel from the start, and it kind of turns a little bit sour in the middle there. You know, from around dark side of the rover. Yes. Um, it goes That's into a, strong, a darker it's kind a of strong kind of uh, almost almost political. If it, well, if you that actually saying it's it's actually the song was it came from a photograph. I have it here on the wall up above me. It's from, about my father. It was. Um, so he has he passed away nine years ago so before that actually since he passed away obviously i wrote the song but before that i used to have a, have a picture there i still have it and i was looking at the picture one day after he passed away and i was just thinking you know that it'd be lovely to just write a song about the way he was in the in the picture and how he looked you know because i'm looking at it there now actually and it's he has a sort of a half smile he's sort of smiling but still frowning at the same time you know so it was always a an edge to him like he was a lovely man obviously a brilliant man but there was a little an edge to him you know and that's where i kind of got that that song there dark side of the rover you know but that's that's one of those songs anyway but I, as i said it does turn a little bit darker um toward on that point there so it kind of goes a bit darker but it's still upbeat i, I think i've achieved the upbeat feeling of it but just, just a little bit darker you know if that if that's um if that's explaining it a bit better but i um you know i i kept there's still synths going through but also the synths get slightly darker as well um if i played a song with with the acoustic uh, you wouldn't hear any synths or any production and you could get the raw kind mm -hmm. of um you get the raw feeling so they're actually even more dark uh, darker in the uh, when i played them without any without any backing so i suppose in a way the production does help to lighten things a bit you know would, would you like to play it i can of course yeah i have the guitar uh, strategically placed here right on my right hand side <laughs> so i have a few lyrics here because again there's so many songs that i write sometimes it's hard to keep track of the lyrics i'm in the process of um rehearsing with a band as well so i have the lyrics typed up so that when i go to perform them at the end i'll be able to learn them off but for now is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to read the lyrics if I need. <laughs> so this is a song. Um, this is, what's this? Number five on the album. It's called Good Old Days. Before the shutters come down And the lights are switched off before I throw the towel into the rain I want to sing like birds sing No matter who listens 
for what they did. For they plant the bones of a weathered old man before the flesh and blood becomes clay. I want to play like children play world in my own little way. The price of living comes with a cost. So much is gained while so much is lost. Some things can never be replaced. Remember, these are the good old days. The engines have ceased before they're ringing the closing time bell. I want to bloom like flowers bloom, leave the story I'd be happy to tell. The price of living comes with the cost, so much is gained. While so much is lost, some things can never be replaced. Remember, these are the good old days. The price of living comes with a cost. So much is gained while so much is lost. Some things can never be replaced. Remember, these are the good old days. These are the good old days. These are the good old days. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. That's, Brilliant. Now that's very, Thank very, you, very, very strong track, but it's not my favorite. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, page of favorite. No, no, no. That's at all. All. That's at all. <laughs> Greatest Escape. Ooh. And uh, you're going to laugh right. at me, and I'd say the viewers are going to laugh at me. But at the start, and you're quite right, at the start, what I found was this: a lot of the songs were soft. And yeah. a, a little way into the, the start of the album, I got an Ultravox vibe. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know, before your time, James. And then no, later on in the album, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. Now you can tell yeah. me, am I raving or what? No, no, no. I do love um, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. I definitely hear that. And I, I know a few Ultravox songs. I would have been listening to them, but I think that sound is actually, it's coming back, you know, because obviously stuff goes around in cycles, I think. So there is a lot of synthy sounds, 80s synthy sounds that are, are happening nowadays in music. And I wanted to... It's funny that I'm trying to make a modern album, folk music, modern, <laughs> with synths uh, that are from the 80s, <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. You know, so. but it, it's just wonderful. I mean, um, and, and I didn't want to yeah. sacrifice the, you know, the lyrical content either, because sometimes if you get um, into synthy areas and pop, you kind of lose out a bit on the lyrics and you haven't the much time to... No, so I wanted to keep the meaning of stuff, but add in a modern sound to 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 the lyrics. You know, yeah, the, the lyrics the lyrics are very strong. Like I jotted down some some of the ones that <laughs> that uh, <laughs> jumped out at me. Surrounded by fair weather friends. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> a couple of lines there. Yeah, that that that, that you just sang there. Uh, Price of living comes at a cost. So much is gained, so much is lost. There's another, yeah. there's another uh, song there, another track with this line, taking the beatings over and over again. Oh, um, yeah. This, there's all them. Um, the, the lyrics are very, very, very strong. Thanks, man. And actually, there was, a, like, the good old days, I had a, where I lived before, I had a sort of, there was a plaque or a timber kind of thing that was bought in some shop, or maybe a pound shop even, just had 
these are the good old days written on it so i was like oh that's that'd be a lovely title for the song so then i thought like the normally way it starts with a title and and then i kind of developed that so what does that mean if these are the good old days then it means to be more present because your life is happening now it's not it's not next year you know and it's not definitely not last year so it's actually now as we're sitting here this is life this is it like you don't get any second chances so these are the good old days <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean and yeah. there's actually a quote there i want to sing like birds sing no matter who listens or what they think that's taken not it's not totally uh the quote itself but it's like roomy you know the, the poet um yes i don't yes. know loads about him but the poet roomy uh he said a quote like that sing uh like birds sing no matter who listens you know that was the kind of gist of the quote so I thought that, well now is the time to live your life so <clears throat> that that's kind of a strong that was what that was about keeping in the present moment and living your life and being happy then with the story that you've yep. made and yep. how you're you know and you can't always like as it says there the price of living comes with a cost you know it definitely does because you know you gain so much in life and then it's and then it's left and we really don't understand where it goes after that so i know it's deep <laughs> But I like I like being deep. I like to provoke a bit of a bit of thought, you know. Yeah, no, no, it's yeah. wonderful, especially in this COVID nineteen. I hate I hate talking about the c word. Yeah. I mean, and uh, the minute I mention it, people just roll their eyes. But especially mm. now, especially now, people are going, "Well, I haven't. God forbid something happened in the morning. But mm. I haven't gone here, and I haven't done this, and I haven't done that, and yeah. I haven't done the other. Like I." Today now I spun out on the bike, out to the yeah. rock, and then out to emo, and of course uh, took a video of myself uh, talking to a bird. Lovely. <laughs> the bird, the little, I know, I know. How embarrassing! If he talks back, if he talks back, John, then they're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, but actually, yeah, he was a lovely little bullfinch, and of course he, he realized uh, I had food. He, he wasn't he wasn't stupid now. This bird, yeah, he so hopped right up to me, and uh, you see. I suppose we're kind of, um, in a sense, we're, uh, I don't know how to put this really, and I should be able to, that we're kind mm. of, sometimes we're very slow to kind of reveal our emotional side, if you know. Yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. And me me too, like, and I like the fact that I can write songs, I kind of, I'm lucky that way that I can put them into songs, and it's a great channel, you know, but there, uh, people do struggle to kind of, maybe they take things for granted or they don't let themselves they procrastinate about life. You know, and I did that. I did that for a long time, and then I realized the kind of that. Well, what am I waiting for? Like, I need to just go out. And even if it's just like you said, going out to emo, it's the most amazing thing to be on your own in the middle of a woods. And there's no ego. You know, there's no ego in the woods because you, you don't yeah. have to impress anybody. Yeah. There's no one looking at you. Maybe a bullfinch, but <laughs> that's it. That's you know, it. That's it. there's no judgment. So I think people should do more of that. But even if they're in a crowd, no one cares. You know, nobody genuinely like people are so caught up in their own thing they're not worried about what shirt i'm wearing or yeah oh look at yeah. your man up here so there's a lot of that going on that's that's not great i don't know how to change it but i know personally for me i think writing about and singing about it is a, is a big help you know mm. yeah it's, it's a great right, way right. To... just in other words just go do it just do it yeah just go do it yeah it sounds like a, a night ad <laughs> just do it but that's true like it's you need to just live now because and and the thing about writing albums, <clears throat> I, I'll have something to leave. You know, this will be my story. I can leave this behind. No matter how many albums I write or whatever, I'd still have something done. And that was a goal to try and leave. Um, not not going anywhere, obviously, yet. Hopefully, touch wood. <laughs> but you never know. Like You just don't know. Especially now, like in the last couple of months, you're kind of stuck at home and you're thinking, oh, you really feel it. You know, I, I wish I was able to go here. So you're kind of taking for granted all the stuff you could do. And maybe we can do more. And when I say do more, I mean <clears throat> maybe just not sit on the couch and watch TV and go out in the rain even, walk around in the woods in this bills of rain. What's the worst that can happen? You know, just live your life. Yeah. That's what I'm, what I'm getting at. But yeah, that, yeah. I, got, I got that sentiment from the album. Do you know the other thing I got from the album? Legacy. Legacy, yeah. I've Legacy always... and, and the stories of people you knew and you were obviously – family members before yeah and i i'm obviously like we're all part of somebody else's legacy like we're not just we're all unique of course but i'm i'm part of my father's legacy or my grandfather so 
they all they all had been through a journey that that i ended up being here you know without all those people none of it would have been possible so <clears throat> i have to acknowledge that as well you know and not i suppose sometimes i get maybe a bit too nostalgic or too wrapped up in it but i think it's very important to to respect and look into the lives of the people who came before you and how did they do this or what did they do or you know and i think it, i like to acknowledge that kind of thing and i love listening to people's stories about you know their grandparents or you know i'd even like listen to my own grand my grandmother now she'd tell you stories about all sorts of people around the town or all the things she did around the town and it's completely it's a completely different town nowadays than what she know knew then you know and and it's only it's only i suppose it's 85 years but it's a short short period of time in the greater scheme of things in life so that to me says like we're only just here uh, as a blip and then we're gone again you know gone again yeah, and you're right, but the, you town, can, you the can, town has changed yeah. incredibly. Just, yeah, just. and I know, um, <clears throat> like, people will probably end up in 100 years' time, this will be probably, I don't know, <laughs> dust. <laughs> but uh, at least I can have a stab at leaving, leaving some of my um, my thoughts on the world around me here at the moment. So that that's my idea of it anyway. And to be able to just express how I'm feeling, uh, to me, like... I, I don't I, I love to let people hear it and I love to connect with them, but I, I have to like it first and I need to know yeah, I did my best in that song and I tried to do I tried to do it justice by those lyrics, so it has to pass my test first. I have to be happy with it. And once it I'm happy with it, then then I can let people hear it. So that might sound a bit selfish, but I'm definitely putting my ears to it first. And if I'm not happy then it won't it won't be heard by anybody else. So you know that that if that comes across, if that, if that makes sense without being too big-headed about it, you know? No, no, no. But it, I mean, it's, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's it's your almost like gift to the world. So you are yeah. protective of it. True, yeah, yeah. And it, I think it's a gift too because sometimes um, I don't know where some of the, the it's like I know how to write them down and sometimes it just come into my mind and I'm thinking, where, where did that come from now? But that's a whole area. Maybe it's something, maybe you store up stuff that you've watched or <clears throat> movies you've watched or obviously the stories that grandparents tell you. I think they're all soaked in. Or maybe some of it is just kind of passed down in genetics. And I have, I'd love to go back and find out in um, if, if there was poets or, or singers, you know, back in, I'm sure there was, of course there was, in my mother and father's side. And I'd love to just go back and find out but there's not loads of records of that kind of stuff either you know so this is this is a record of what i'm doing you know it's like a my little piece of <laughs> my little piece of music to leave behind yeah and, and i won't be the last one yeah sorry yeah. james to sorry, cut across you there go on go on no no sorry i've just said it won't be the, I'm, ta I'm talking as if it might be the last one <laughs> obviously not i'd love to have another 50 albums you know so i'll keep making music as long as i'm breeding I'll always try and make music. And I'll try not leave six years in between this, the, the, this one and the next one. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll, might, we'll, we'll, try, we'll try a year, but maybe two, you know. And, I'm and got, James, I, sorry now to cut in. I'll, I'll, I will burst yeah, in on you here oh, now. I'm going to be selfish now. I like, as I mentioned before, my favorite track is The Greatest <laughs> Escape. Yeah. Like, like, I'm just curious, like, <clears throat> What was the inspiration behind the song? I think it's so, I, for me. I, it's I think it's the strongest song on the on the album. Yeah, well, to be honest, it, do you know what this is now? This is pure honesty that I had. I was drinking a lot at the time I wrote it. Well, actually, I'd given up, just about given up. But it was actually the struggle of of stopping that that kind of lifestyle. And that's where it's it's almost like a love affair I had with drinking and being out partying. You know, so. I knew it would come a day when I had to stop and it wasn't doing me mental health any good or my physical health. So I just had to stop it. And but to go from uh, say drinking heavy to not drinking at all is a big, is a big, it's a hard step, to be honest. Just, and that was the that was almost like a battle written in the song, you know. So that's where it comes from. So I suppose it's a real, really honest piece, even though it's set against a pop kind of a background with loads of synths. That's where it came from. So I mean, 
the first line what can i say but lately i was just burning the candle both ends you know day a day after day like crazy and then surrounded by fair weather friends searching for rhyme and reason and something something outside of me so i wasn't i always say now like if you can't go out you need to go in <laughs> so yeah. go into yourself yeah. find out what's what's getting you what's really get bothering you and try to get that out instead of looking for it in you know drugs or alcohol or whatever else and or food or chocolate you know it's a lot of people go different ways so my my mine was just alcohol to get you know not to go down that road it's not a, but i mean that's where the, the song stem from to try and get over that feeling of why, why am i letting this tell me what to do you know what i mean and then the, the feeling that oh like there's a stage where it's like oh how am i going to do how am i going to do without this like you're sort of left in a void like after after an, any relationship, you know, if a relationship breaks down, you're kind of wondering, oh, what do I do with myself now? What did, what did I do before I got into this relationship? You're kind of lost. And that was the idea then. And sometimes I think of your kiss, it's sort of a, you think it was a love song, but it's technically a love song about having something that you're not supposed to have. Uh, and then sometimes I think of your smile. So, you know, there wasn't all doom and gloom. There was ups and downs with the same thing. So, um how do we overcome distance we were always so close yeah you were the greatest escape so that was what it was it was i was escaping how i felt anxious or how i felt depressed or whatever else was going on at the time and i thought by going the the drinking route it would help and it does for a while but there it comes a point where it it all goes uh pear-shaped you might say so that was really trying to <clears throat> express how i felt about it, it was like facing reality naked and overexposed so you're kind of left thinking oh god as i said what what will i do with myself now I'm, I'm left kind of i have to actually face the music and face reality and address some of the issues that are are causing the the problem because it's usually a, a symptom of something else you know so, and i did start to get in more into um meditation and uh, using that as a way of i even did a cbt there for a while which I found a great help. So that that was addressing the, the situation. I felt the anxiousness, the uneasiness, you know. Um so that was yeah, I and then I went to the bridge. You see, I, I I am not perfect. Nobody is. Each day I grow a little stronger than this. And I thought that was a nice kind of bridge to to sum it up, you know. James, then the last I will, of course, yeah, I'm, I'm talking enough about it. No, 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 <laughs> oh, no. It's your show. Um, Oh, thanks a million, John. I, I don't want to. I tend to ramble on, though. You might have noticed that. <laughs> um, on the on the album, I'll just say this: but it's it's actually there's a lot of synths as an intro, and then there is actually no acoustic guitar. So I'm doing a version of it now with the acoustic guitar. Um, so we'll see how it works. What can I say but lately I was burning the candle both ends Day after day like crazy Surrounded by fair weather friends Searching for rhyme and reason And something outside of myself Taking the beatings over and over again Sometimes I think of your kiss, love Sometimes I think of your smile If everything's better like this, love Why is my conscience on trial? And how do we overcome distance When we were always so close You were the greatest escape, love That's what I'm missing the most Facing reality Naked and overexposed Life is so bittersweet The truth is that nobody knows Are we awake or dreaming? Are caught by the web of time? Is life an illusion Or just a trick of the mind? 
sometimes I think of your kiss, love. Sometimes I think of your smile. If everything's better like this, love, why is my conscience on trial? And how do we overcome distance when we were always so close? You were the greatest escape, love. That's what I'm missing the most. I am not perfect. Nobody is. Each day I grow a little stronger than this. myself getting older and knowing there's so much to do as I look over my shoulder there's a lingering shadow of you it was an awkward journey and I went the long way around today it was worth it all for the peace I have found but sometimes I think of your kiss, love. Sometimes I think of your smile. If everything's better like this, love, why is my conscience on trial? And how do we overcome distance when we were always so close? You were the greatest escape, love. That's what I'm missing the most. You were the greatest escape, love. That's what I'm missing the most. <laughs> That's an acoustic version. Thank you so much, John. Yeah, because, yeah, because the, with all the production and the synths, um, yeah. there's definite, uh, a definite Ultravox vibe. Like, have you ever heard the track, their track, Vienna? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's probably one of the most famous ones I would have heard. I, I love that song, actually. I wonder, um, I'm just thinking, like, I did, my mother would have played some of that stuff as I grew up, you know, so I'm sure it would have so soaked in somewhere, you know, I suppose that's 80s, isn't it, 80s, it is. late 80s, it is. maybe, yeah. I was born in 85, so there was a lot of music at the end of the 80s when I was oh, yeah. a toddler, you know, that would have soaked up, I'd imagine. You're you an know, 80s so. child, and I'm a 60s yeah. child, what's going on at all, where is, yeah. where is the time gone? <laughs> These are the good old days, John. <laughs> we're, li we're living it. We're living it. We're living it. And I, it's like we're actually off air, uh, off camera. We, I, were I was explaining to you that we came up, my, Mick and I came up with this live and leash brand just before before COVID-19. Yeah. There we go. That word again. And um, <laughs> it was kind of parked. We had we had graphics. And I kind of, as I was explaining to you off camera, I was yeah. I, I had this picture of something like this. And I think it was like COVID-19 and we had a little bit of space and time to try something yeah. different. Um, yeah. I, I think, every cloud has a silver lining. In, absolutely. In I think I was thinking about this as well. That I think in some way, now this might sound for the birds, but uh, I think the earth and people needed this. Society needed, not, not obviously the sickness and all the stuff that goes with it, but we needed to take a break, you know, like in a body that that is doing too much of one thing, it just can't sustain it. So, I mean, there's the body will let you know, you know, diabetes, heart attack, stroke, you know. So the body tells you. And I think the earth in some way, now maybe people will give out about this and, and think I'm talking nonsense. But I often think the earth needs to let us know that we're there's something not right here. If we're running around in society's race and then we're getting packed into trains and we're getting packed into buses and... We're just walking all over each other and you know some that can't go on so i think something like this really brings it to light if that makes it, any no, kind of it, sense no, that's it, my, my opinion yeah, absolutely. absolutely i mean obviously the, the suffering that's um that's going that's going on at the moment that so many families are all, all around the world all around ireland suffering mm. have suffered so so badly but um 
There's a lot. There's a lot in what you've just said. There really is because uh, at the end of the day, running around uh, like crazy people, and mm. of course you're taking maybe taking your loved ones for granted and not seeing them as much as, as yeah. you want, and even um, not writing the songs you want, and yeah, not, uh, visiting the places you want, and not doing what your heart is telling you to do in a sense. I know that yeah. sounds now that sounds even more airy fairy. <laughs> no, but I, t I totally agree. Like there's a generalized and I've heard this because I did a bit of CBT as I mentioned that there's a generalized anxiety for most people and they don't even realize it. Like they feel like they have to um they have to be going and they have to be somewhere. Myself included. I always feel that there's something maybe, am I supposed to be doing something today? You can't it's hard to justify sitting down. When, especially the work I'm in and I'm not doing a nine to five job, sometimes you get a bit think, oh God, I'm sort of sitting here, I'm playing guitar, I'm writing a song, but I mean, maybe I should be out doing more. You know, you get this kind of feeling, but that creates a little bit of anxiety then within me personally. But I think it's a, it's a collective thing, you know. I do, I do believe in the collective consciousness and I'm getting really airy-fairy now, but for me, it's, it's hard to explain what I'm talking about. I think there's a, a collective i know people call it god or whatever else but it's a collective consciousness or a, if that's the best way to describe it and i suppose i've been reading a lot on it lately and and i'm tap, trying to tap into it with the songs as well you know to try and like, try and examine it for myself like because it's a journey that i'm on trying to meditate and trying to get find more peace but then you know stuff like this happens and you get oh god i can't i can't go this place or i can't do that and it takes it from you you know but i think it's always there if you tap into it if you're willing to tap into it there is definitely a collective consciousness somewhere that we can tap and, into and hmm. absolutely. absolutely and at the start of your journey you mentioned two teachers uh off yeah. camera there that um put you on the road to music put it that way would you yeah. like would you like to talk oh, uh, about them as I said to you earlier, the, the, Richard Boot was a was a teacher. I'll never forget Richard Boot. Actually, sadly, went to his funeral in January. They're gone, you know. And I'd know his son uh, Shane, who's in Kua, a fantastic band as well. And but when I was in primary school, I had Mr. Boot for I think two years. I'm not sure if it was second and third or third and fourth or something. But I had um, he used to have a sort of an old organ at the top of the the piano organ on the top of the class, and he'd have an acoustic guitar. You could be doing maths or something and you'd, you'd be asked then to come up can i have the firsts and then he'd have the seconds i think i was the first you know there was a first and then there were seconds deeper voices then there was the descants um so we'd all get up and we'd be singing around and lads then from the town my age i will remember this were in my class we'd be singing songs and you know just randomly during the day and then he'd have a show on one particular year i never forget the show was american it was a an american team show kind of a country team show so there was elvis willie nelson i think johnny cash woody guthrie all those songs were being sang at this show you know so and and it was um mr maloney also another teacher in primary school had him for two years as well and he he got us into doing a play and a friend of mine from town as well albert Byrne, was we had two kind of lead parts i was a butcher and i was a <laughs> like fred i don't know if you remember fred from carnation street do, back in the do. i say i say you know <laughs> i get to do this but i was dressed up as a butcher and i was it was a strange what is it called three weddings and a pound of sausages that was the name of the play so that was my first first experience on stage was then with mr maloney i was it was really good some of the best days you'll ever have i think are in school they were for me i know it's not the same for everybody but i can i have great memories of you know, of all that kind of stuff you know obviously there was other parts of they weren't so good but those kind of things really stick uh, i remember being fascinated that he could play the guitar and the organ you know there was two instruments he could play two instruments at the same time and i just got stuck on the guitar then for some reason as he was able to stand up with it and he had a strap and i think some uh there was an electric guitar as well at one stage and that was like oh an electric guitar like i couldn't get over this i could see someone who's standing up playing an electric guitar that you know that was close to me that was so i said I, I must but it was only it was a few years after that it wasn't until i was about 13 i think that i started when an uncle of mine said would you not would you try the guitar he'd play he was playing a couple of uncles played 
Um, but they were more into the heavy metal, like really heavy Slayer, Pantera, Megadeth kind of stuff. And I still listen to some of that stuff, believe it or not. I really do like met heavy metal also. But um, I did. I thought that's what the, that guitar was until I picked up the acoustic guitar properly and I could get sounds, you know, and then I worked my way through and eventually, and I took a few lessons with a local teacher um, at the start, Caroline Smith. She yes. was a great teacher yes. at the time. Yeah, she taught half the town, I think. So, you know, I just, I fell in love with it. It was a real, um, I suppose it was another escape. You know, it was a real thing that I could just get stuck into this now and I could stay in my room. I'd be playing guitar. Nobody could come near me and I, that was it. And that's all I wanted to do. I, I'd kind of gone through the, the Sega Mega Drive or the, uh, the Nintendo and the PlayStation. That was before then. And then I got the guitar and I suppose I just, I was addicted to it straight away. I never wanted to put it down. I used to come home. I used to go play it before school. Then I'd play during break if I got my hands on it and after school, you know. But ha having said that now, I'm not the world's amazing guitar player. I thought I'd be, <laughs> thought I'd be much, much better nowadays from putting all that practice in. But as well, when I realized that the, the songwriting type of thing came in and I could write songs, the, the guitar, if you get me, kind of took a back seat to put the lyrics forward instead. So I just kept, became a way of backing myself to get the message across, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I, when I started, it was more, more like I wanted to be the next Jimi Hendrix. And then I wanted to be, now it's kind of like a Bob Dylan thing, you know, where you don't really get into the guitar as much. You just want to write songs and get a message out there that's that's where i'm at now at the moment so but uh it's uh, you're all i'm always learning i'm still learning stuff like i pick up that there's stuff that i would even try to play now and it's technically stuff that i would love to play and now it takes a long long time to get it but i would get it eventually if i sat down for long enough and and played it you know but i suppose as i said it's more to do with how a song is coming across now nowadays so that's where i'm at at the moment <laughs> Yeah, I, I get the, I get the impression that I ramble on, John. So you can stop no, me anytime you no, like. No, no, no. Again, <laughs> it's your show, James. It's your <laughs> show, and then, no, yeah. it's, it's fascinating. But it, I'm convinced now. I have another pet theory. I have a lot of pet theories that this yeah. awful period we're going through will um, result in a huge artistic wave. We'll have um, new writers new performers, new singers, new bands, because uh, for one simple reason, amongst others, but for one very very obvious reason, people will be home. They can't go yeah. to work. They'll actually spend time on their craft. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Like, I, I'm spending a lot more time I in the last few months sitting down, as I said, where I would have kind of walked by the guitar before, but then during the last couple of months, I had it, in the corner and i was also teaching online like I, I do teach guitar and i'm blessed that i'm able to keep have the guitar in my hand every day pretty much so but even more so in the last few months and i'm like you couldn't go anywhere else so eventually you have to give in and and there's only so much you could watch on netflix or there's only so much you can read and then there's only so you have to kind of as i'll play a guitar now and i'll play this and i learn something really good and, you know so i i actually didn't write as many i wrote a few songs but I thought I'd write more. And then I was thinking, sure, I'm, I'm not going out to meet people. I'm not hearing conversations. So there's not loads of uh, inspiration coming at me at the moment. And it's just kind of the books I'm reading or, or watching Netflix or whatever is on the television. Now, having said that, I don't really watch television. It's more I'd rather pick up a book than watch the television, to be honest. Yeah, tell me, have you a favorite Netflix show? Oh, I've after, I'm after watching a few. Um, I I did watch Still Game. I don't know if you've ever heard of Still Game. No. It's a Scottish comedy. Um, I watched Narcos. I have watched uh, Ozark. Ozark. All those. Ozark. Oh, Ozark. Yeah. Ozark. It is very dark. Yeah, and I watched uh, Better Call Saul recently as well. Don't know if you followed that. It's the no, but break. I'll get into it. <laughs> and and uh, I, I, it sounds like I watch loads and loads of Netflix. I don't really, but I from time to time I'd spend a couple of hours. And I started watching a program called F is for Family, which is a really, it's it's not for kids. But it's an animation, but it's definitely not for kids. It's more of a family guy type of one, you know? Yeah. But it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> and if it's up with F family guy, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's good. It's really, really good. It's, and it's actually set, I think it's set in the 80s. So 
parents with uh, three kids and and how they're being correct corrected in the 80s is a lot different than they are being corrected now anyway you know that sort of thing. yeah it's yeah yeah it's, it's amazing the changes as, as we go yeah. through the generations but Absolutely. Um, have you have you a, a song to finish up the show i'm not putting any pressure on you because we've, no, we've no. got the time but is is there one yeah. is there one on the album that really speaks to you again i'm being very airy fairy but you know what i mean yeah no uh, i think I might go for the song that's um, the intro song to the album, which is We Are Stories. It was the first single off the album, and it went down very well for most of it when I, went, when I put it out as a single. I think especially because of the video. As I said, the video is, is, the, is pretty much the pictures that are on the inside of the album. I use them on a, uh, as a projection kind of coming forward. So maybe I'll finish with that one. I'll, I'll sing that one. And of um, course, bef before we get that far, James, yeah. you've a, you've a lot of people to thank. Well, I mean, you probably have too oh, yeah. too many people to thank. But I mean, I have so many people to thank. I mean, uh, thank you for having me on. As I was, I was thinking there, as you said pleasure, earlier, you know, providing these kind of platforms, it's huge. It's a benefit, really big benefit for me, because it's very hard to get onto any mainstream radio or certainly not television. So. For you to provide a platform for me like this to be able to you know to show off my album or to promote it that's amazing you know so we need i think that as you said the COVID, there's that word again but that has brought a lot of this to light you know we we're kind of going back to the drawing board we're going back to basics and we're we're starting again with stuff like and i i'd, I'd hate to see us going back to the way we were you know i'd like to see in the future um maybe more of this but being able to go out places as well you know and, but not to just go back to the way we were. I think we need to embrace this kind of these kind of interviews and live chats and stuff like that as well. So, yeah, but, but yeah, it's, ama um, it's amazing what the technology can do. I mean, yeah, our, our son uh, Nathan, who's who's producing the show, he had a, he had a phrase there yesterday that made me kind of sit back and think. He goes, "Every every smartphone now is a TV station." I go, "What?" God, yeah, yeah, but. When you think about it, he's right. It's amazing. It's definitely right, yeah. And there's probably a song in that too. <laughs> but it is. It, you're carrying a uh, you're carrying a computer around in your pocket. I mean, thinking back to when I got my first mobile phone at was I sixteen, maybe seventeen, and there was no there was no such thing as cameras anyway for a start. And I remember saying to somebody at the time, imagine you could see somebody when you were talking to them. You know, that's it's only what twenty five years ago, I suppose, but still. So much has, has changed in, in that short spirit of, uh, period of time. So, But yeah, I better not forget the thank yous, John. I wanted to thank, there's, there is a list of names on the inside sleeve of the people who funded the album back in 2018. So it's been yeah. going on then. Yeah. Now, some of them, I hope you can read them all. And if you're listening, I'd thank you again. And there's people who, who had supported it and had, not, had chosen not to have their name on it. So I hope that... You know, it's very difficult to get this right sometimes, and you might forget somebody, but I hope I haven't forgotten anybody. You know, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, anybody who did fund me and anyone who helped me out, all family and friends. They're always very supportive. From day one, since I picked up the guitar, I've had nothing but help and support, you know, and I really do appreciate it. So that that's um without without those people, this this album is would not be non existent, I think. So that's a massive thanks to all those people involved. And I hope I don't forget anyone. I think you know who you are. You know, friends, family, cousins, my mother, father, you know, all those people. And my young nephew now was just eight months old, was a big um, inspiration. My first nephew, Zoe's, I don't know if she's listening. I hope she is, but Odin's foot, actually, is he, his name is Odin. That's his foot there from the day he was born. It's oh, on the inside man. sleeve. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was a nice little, um, a nice little picture to have of him, you know. And I've actually packed, uh, packed away a couple of albums. I know he's only eight months old now, but I packed away a couple of albums into an envelope and sealed it. And I'm going to give it to him whenever he's old enough to listen to it. So it'll be part of his story then. Brilliant. Brilliant. So yeah, so thanks again, everyone. It's really, it's a pleasure to be able to put music out to people who listen to, you know. What can I say? <laughs> I might. Um, will I play you out with the last track every time, John? To oh, we've loads oh. of time for you, James. Loads of time. Sure, it's ah. your show. <laughs> Thanks, John. <Joe. laughs>
Well, look, I'll play out with the um, the opening track of the album. It's called We Are The Stories. Um, Once upon a time in a fairy tale We followed love like the holy grail We made our way through the cold and dark we found our feet and we left our mind. We are the stories of young and old. Stories of people who were brave and bold. Stories like yours, stories like mine. We are the stories we leave behind. Some days we act like we're deaf, dumb, and blind. We are the products of our own design. Selling this world at our own expense. Screaming in vain, sitting on the fence. We are the stories captured in songs. Voices of spirits from the great beyond. Stories that lasted the test of time. We are the stories we leave behind. Whoa, we are the stories we leave behind. Whoa, we are the stories we leave behind. We lose the plot, forget the signs. If we're not reading between the lines, we make our choices, we take the risks. We are by nature dramatic twists. We are the stories of young and old, stories of people who are brave and bold, stories of hearts that are intertwined. We are the stories we leave behind. Oh, we are the stories we leave behind. Oh, we are the stories we leave behind. Oh, we are the stories we leave behind. We are the stories. <laughs> Powerful, James. Powerful. Thank you. That's a Thanks brilliant, a brilliant way to, to finish up the show today. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have you back later in the summer. Oh, I say it to everyone because because it would be nice to have people back, especially after your album yeah. that's coming out yeah. in July the third. Because if if there's any and I, I, look, people will say, "Oh, you're biased because you have James on the show and you're just saying this for the sake of saying it." But actually, I'm not. This should, if there's any justice in the world, sell really 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 well it's powerful yeah i was playing my, my, my good lady right. wife was was listening along earlier on she's going very oh, good really really good ah uh, that's yeah, great she's, so she's I like, if anyone wants to get a copy i mean you can get in touch on facebook or instagram you know and just or um send me an email james o'connor music james o'connor music at yahoo.co.uk that's the email address it's as old as the hills but i'm still using it and uh or get me on facebook so just let me know that you want a copy of the album because it's kind of a limited. I I didn't get a huge run of albums because I know that there's no gigs, so it's hard to sell the physical copies. But I will post them out to you, and we can arrange some small payment or something to cover postage. You know, we'll do something. But just get in touch if if people want a copy. There's no problem at all. Yeah, we we'll, we'll um, have the we'll, your Facebook link. Oh yeah, open the, perfect. Open the credits. Yeah. Absolutely, and, uh, yeah, that's great. Like I say, it's gonna sell. You know. Yeah, I hopefully I'll end up having to get loads and loads of copies made, and that would be ideal. But uh, if it's not from the third of July, it'll be on all the, all the streaming platforms. You know, Spotify. It'll be on Bandcamp, and I suppose if people want to buy it digitally, Bandcamp would be the best way for me because through Spotify, there's not money generated. You know, I get very little. But if you wanted to support me through Bandcamp you'd pay for the album and they'd stop maybe a euro or two, but I'd get the majority of it, so, you know, that sort of way. So it will be up there as well. That's Bandcamp, or it's on from the 3rd of July, that is, um, iTunes, all the usual, Spotify, 
Google Music, Deezer, all those. So many to name. Everywhere. <laughs> Every, that, like yeah. I mentioned before, if there's any there's no excuse. In, the world, <laughs> no, in other words, get, you your, get, your, get your wallet out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> get the card out. As I said, on, on Bandcamp, you can actually um, make an offer. You don't have to pay. I think I have it. I'll set it up that you don't have to pay the full amount. You could pay whatever you want. You know, that sort of way towards it. But yeah, you'll get it on Facebook anyway. You'll, you'll get the details on Facebook after this. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, so a credit, yeah it's, a credit, it's a credit. Look, I'm happy, I'm happy with the way it went. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of it now. And, and I don't say that too often. I know that it's music is subjective and people will have their own opinions of it but for me i'm, I'm proud of of the album the way it has turned out and how it sounds so that's uh, once i'm happy then yeah you should be yeah, you should be. you should be you should be i am <laughs> thanks john Good. no problem at all no so problem. hopefully later in the summer absolutely be great anytime john i'd love to do another one someday and we and sing more songs more off the new album and the old stuff as well so Brilliant. there's no shortage of songs <laughs> No, well, no. no, no shortage of inspiration on your on no, your behalf. No, I like to keep keep it going the way it's. I'm happy the way it's going. So I, you know, and I, and the, the songwriting process is really, as I said before, it's really mindful for me. So I use it as a almost like a, a meditation type of way. You know, mm. it's uh, I don't know what the word is it the word for that. I'm not sure what it is, but it, it's really beneficial for me. Uh, the act of writing it and. You know, so well. Thanks for thanks again, John. Pleasure, <laughs> Better let you go now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go and have a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> enjoy it. Uh, thanks for everyone who's listening in. If there's people listening in or live on Facebook, hello to everyone, and I'll see you all sometime on with a video or something else on on Facebook. Yeah. And we'll have the viewers competition next week with the two. Oh yeah, them. yeah. Uh, so if you need more, John, they'll you know. be able to com compare the two. Yeah, I think, I think it's. I think it's a. It's a. I think it's a gigantic leap forward. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, well, I suppose with the first album, um, we were not a band that long, you know, and it it didn't sound like a full on band. It was it's kind of it's good, but it's not as tight maybe as it should have been. You know, it was a lot younger then. Well, six years ago, I wasn't awfully young, but yeah, more less experience maybe in the studio. So, yeah, yeah, it's happy until yeah. the next one. <laughs> until the next one, which will even be bigger and better. Fingers crossed, yeah. And we're back. If we're able to get back to the live gigs, it'll be even better again. Might get a run in the electric picnic or somewhere. Yeah. Would be ideal. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. It'll happen. It'll happen. Hopefully. James, <laughs> have a great evening. And you too, John. Thanks again. See you later. <laughs>